welcome back to Winning Law. I'm attorney David Wynn with offices in Houston, Texas. And today I'm going to explain what happens if you file a case with immigration and you do it incorrectly. One of the reasons why I'm making this video is that I had two different consultations recently. And these cases and these consultations are still on my mind today because the individuals messed up their case so bad. So in the first consultation, it involved a U.S. citizen man who filed a K-1 fiancé visa for his partner abroad. The partner abroad had a daughter as well from a prior relationship. The idea was that once the visa got approved, the fiancé and her daughter would come to the U.S. at the same time. However, once the visa became available, the fiancé came to the U.S., but her daughter decided to remain in her home country to continue with her studies. She said she would come to the U.S. later on. So after the fiancé came to the U.S., the couple did get married and he filed a green card application for his fiancé. So it's in process right now and it's taking a long time, so he scheduled a paid consultation with our office to discuss how he can move that case and get it processed a lot quicker. Now while I was talking to him, I realized that he made a really, really bad mistake because what he did was that he also when he filed a green card application for his now wife, he also filed an immigrant petition for his new stepdaughter. And I had to explain to him that even though he filed a long time ago, he didn't qualify to file for his stepdaughter because how the law works is that if you are filing a fiance visa, the government will allow any unmarried child under 21 to come in with that foreign relative or that fiance. However, if you're filing an immigrant petition, you can only file for your stepchildren as long as you married the other parent before that child turns 18. So in this situation, the stepdaughter is already over 18 when they got married. So she no longer qualified to be listed as a beneficiary for an immigrant petition. So he filed himself, the government took his money, the case is still pending, and I had to tell him, unfortunately, just because you came in for questions about your wife's case, unfortunately, I found out just by talking to you for 10 minutes that you messed up big time on your stepdaughter's application. Because if you had an attorney, the immigration attorney would have told you, hey, make sure the daughter comes to the U.S. because if she doesn't do it now, there's going to be a very long wait time before she's able to come to the U.S. So this is a good example of why it's so important to speak with an immigration attorney when you're filing your case. Because in that situation, the best situation would be that the daughter comes to the U.S. Because now what's going to happen is that her mother would have to become a green card holder. And when she becomes a green card holder, she can file for her adult daughter, which is now going to take several years before she's able to come to the U.S. I think it's about five or seven years. The second consultation that has been in my mind lately just happened about a couple of days ago. In this situation, uh, the person called me because his stepfather filed an immigrant petition for his mother and also for him and his other brother. And they filed it with a different attorney in New York and the case was issued a notice of intent to deny and then ultimately it was denied. So although he called in because he was worried about his mother's case, unfortunately I had to tell him that he also messed up on his own case. So. Again, in the U.S., if you marry someone and you want to give the children immigration benefits, more likely if you marry them, the children have to be under 18 at the time of the marriage. So when I asked him his age, because I noticed he looked a lot older, he said he was over 18. And I explained that your immigration attorney should have not filed an immigrant petition for you because you didn't qualify. So now what's happening or going to happen is that his case has a very good chance of being placed in deportation proceedings because now he's in the system and the government knows exactly where he is. So this is why it's very important that you hire someone that has a reputation online or that has been practicing immigration for a while. Because when I asked for that other immigration attorney's name, I looked her up on Facebook, I looked her up on Google, and she had absolutely no reviews. So just remember, when you're hiring an immigration attorney, make sure you hire someone with experience or you're going to end up like one of these other two cases that where you file the case, the government doesn't tell you that you did something wrong. They just take your money and later on, they'll deny your case. And when they deny your case, if you happen to be in the U.S., 
you may be placed in deportation proceedings. And if you're not in the U.S., you may have a very extensive delay in your case caused by your inability to hire the right attorney or use an attorney in the first place. So hopefully after listening to these stories, you understand why it's so important for you to hire an experienced immigration attorney to help you with your case. Don't do or file a case by yourself. You're going to create a lot of problems when you do this. So again, thank you for watching Winning Law. I'm attorney David Wynn, and we hope that we have made immigration easier to understand. At David Gwynn's Law Office, we are here to help you. We bring families together through immigration. And on the other hand, we help you find solutions. All your legal needs in the hands of people who care, who are there for you. We'll take care of your loved ones at the law office of David Wren.